The Unite the Right rally, also known as the Charlottesville Riots, was a violent clash of white nationalists and counter-protesters that occurred on Saturday, August 12, 2017, and resulted in Virginia's government declaring a state of emergency. This rally was organized by white nationalists, including neo-Nazis and KKK members, to protest the removal of a statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee from a park in the city. The night before the rally, the white nationalists marched through the campus of the University of Virginia, carrying torches and chanting slogans such as the Nazi phrase, blood and soil, white lives matter, and you will not replace us. The next morning, white nationalists gathered at Emancipation Park, the site of the Robert E. Lee statue. At the same time, counter-protesters began to gather, comprised of local residents, church groups, and civil rights leaders, in opposition of the alt-right protesters. Tensions rose as verbal and physical fights broke out between the armed white nationalists and counter-protesters, and ultimately resulted in many injuries and the death of Heather Hires, who was killed as a white nationalist drove his car through a crowd. We looked at two news sources in analyzing the media frames of this event, the Tribune content agency, Business News, or the Trib, and the New York Times. The media coverage of this event not only included the violence of the event itself, but also covered the widespread public reaction to the rally and the organization of protests and vigils across the United States that were held in solidarity against the racism seen at Charlottesville. The most prominent frame in both news sources was the attribution of responsibility frame, which was coded in over 80% of articles in the Tribune. Both the New York Times and the Tribune's framing of this event held white nationalists responsible for the violence of the rally. This white nationalist subframe attributes the cause of the riot to the strengthened alt-right wing and the rise of white supremacist groups. Many of the articles place heavy blame on these groups of people and their racist ideas on display at the rally. In addition, over one-third of the articles in the Trib coded for statements that suggest that Trump's actions and rhetoric have allowed for the rise in white nationalist groups, as well as position Trump as a white nationalist ally. You know, he stood in one of his rallies when he was running before he was elected and said, if they would have did that 40 years ago, they'd have left out on the stretcher. You okayed this activity. Many of the articles blame Trump for supporting and giving fuel to the hateful message of the alt-right. White nationalists at the rally commonly cited Trump as a reason for protesting in order to, quote, take the country back. One of these people was David Duke, a former KKK leader and outspoken white nationalist. This represents a turning point for the people of this country. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. That's what we believed in. That's why we voted for Donald Trump, because he said he's going to take our country back. And that's what we got to do. Lastly, a prominent subframe in both news sources was a criticism of President Trump's response to the rally. This subframe consists of statements in which people condemn the president for his statement after the riots, in which he failed to denounce white nationalists by stating that the violence that ensued could be attributed to both sides of the riot. I think there's blame on both sides. You look at, you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And, and, there was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. This statement outraged many people, as it seemed to imply that both the white supremacists and the counter-protesters were both equally responsible for the violence. Trump also failed to accurately identify and call the protesters as being white nationalists. The prevalence of the attribution of responsibility frame in the articles suggests that assigning blame on certain actors or social forces was important to the media in order to adequately explain what happened in Charlottesville. Many of the subframes, such as white nationalists and Trump, focus on blame at the individual level, attributing the cause of the riots to individual cases of racism. 
Because these subframes focus on racism on individual levels, the reporting of this event in the media largely ignored the role that systematic racism and oppression has in contributing to the climate of hate in the United States today. By pointing fingers at individuals such as Trump and white supremacists, we are missing the big picture of how the broader institutions within the U.S. perpetuate these racist ideas. This is the face of supremacy. This is what we deal with every day, being African American. And this has always been the reality of Charlottesville. You can't stand in one corner in the city and not look at the master sitting on top of Monticello.